Hey, let's watch White Zombie, 1932. This is James. And this is Mike. And we're going to do a commentary on the whole movie because uh, it's public domain. We did Dracula a little while ago, and that one we did it where you have to sync it up with the movie. But this one, since it's a public domain movie, we're going to do the whole thing. Yeah, we're able to actually show the footage because, uh, because it is public domain. Dracula, I guess, is not. No, not at all. But uh, it's really great because uh, this, you know, even though this is public domain, this movie has Bela Lugosi and even Jack Pierce, you can see under the art and uh, technical. On the left, um, Jack Pierce did the makeup on all the Universal monsters, so I guess he did the makeup on uh, Bela Lugosi in this movie. And this also happens to be the first zombie movie. He probably Jack Pierce probably also did the makeup. I would imagine on the other zombies. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But people have a lot of mixed opinions about this movie. Some regard it as an underrated classic, and some people find it really boring. And I can see both sides of the coin, because it is a very flawed movie, the acting is very dated, but it has a certain uh, uniqueness to it, a special antiquity about it. Um, so if you're, maybe you've seen it before. All these movies start with a coach, like there's yeah. the coach to go to Dracula's castle, and this one has this coach that's coming up. Uh -huh. That's the way to start any good movie with Lugosi. Yeah, that's true. The only problem is that there should be a bat in front of there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanted to learn more about the movie, or you know, we'll, we'll try to be a little informative, but we'll uh, we'll also make fun of it a little inevitably. <laughs> what is it? It's a funeral, Manzel. They're afraid of the men who steal dead bodies, so they dig the grave in the middle of the road. Where people pass all of the time. So they're putting it in the road, I guess, because there's more... I guess because there's more like, traffic, so it's like a public road, I guess, so... Keep their dead protected. I see. Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to try to appreciate the movie a little more, or, you know... We'll, uh, we'll help you. We'll help you watch it. We'll watch it with you and see... Yeah, uh, some of these older movies, I know that people have a hard time watching because uh, yeah. they're, they're really slow and all, so maybe by uh, Love those eyes. hearing the uh, voiceovers from us, you can enjoy it a little more. That kind of reminds me of uh, in Bram Stoker's Dracula. That's probably where they took it from. Ah. Not that this is Dracula, but you know, uh -huh. um, you know what yeah. I'm talking about, the part with the eyes in Definitely. the sky. Yeah, in the beginning with yeah. the coach. And you see, like, the eyes appear in the sky. So this is like a, a new, not newlywed, they're, at, they're about to be married. This guy and this girl on the coach, and uh, they're on their way to a friend's house in Haiti. And then they just meet this weird freak on the side of the road who's staring at them. Lugosi never blinks. Doesn't matter what movie he's in, he's just always non-blinking. Listen to this. Zombie! Zombie! That is the first time the word zombie is ever said in a movie. I'm pretty sure of it. So Lugosi has her um, scarf right now, and that's going to become important later on. Speaking of zombie, um, as some might know, I'm a pretty big uh, comic book fan, and I know that um, one of the famous villains from uh, the Donald Duck comic books um, <laughs> Uh, what, everybody knows the Beagle Boys, but uh, one of the uh, other villains in that was a villain called Bombi the Zombie, and apparently uh, that character came because uh, the writer saw this movie, saw White Zombie, really? and that character came from White Zombie. Just a little fact for any oh, Donald Duck fans out there. <laughs> so the movie does have a legacy, but I can definitely understand why a lot of people find it slow and kind of difficult, because... It is. It's, it's a very, it's one of these early 30s uh, talkies, so people were coming off of the silent era. Oh, he's going to explain what the zombie is right here. By whom? Those men you spoke to? They are not men, monsieur. They are dead bodies. Dead? Yes, monsieur. Zombie. The living dead. The living dead. Corpses taken from their grave. Or made to work in sugar mill, 
Mm. Now it's funny, he's actually wrong. They're not corpses brought back to life. Because later in the movie they explain that the zombies are alive. They're just put in a state that resembles death. So this, this isn't the same as like the Romero zombies or anything. This is like real like Haiti voodoo zombie. I guess pretty soon. I, I guess I should explain the origin of zombies. It'd be a good time. Well, then there's this character who's kind of like the uh, Van Helsing. He's like the hero. Excuse me, please. <laughs> Have you got a mask? That's not Edward Van Sloan, though. No, it's not Edward Van Did Sloan. But for some reason, he always asks for a match. Uh, uh, so, like, I'm you'll notice he supposed. says it at least no, it two more true. times Something in the rest of the movie. We uh, stopped. Does that mean something that he's always asking for matches? <laughs> well, uh, there is a book that uh, that overanalyzes the movie and, and it says that because he's the bringer of light because he's like the hero, but I, I don't know. I'm not really sure because he has to, he asks for a match and I don't know. But that, That's a little far-fetched. I don't know. He lights a match a couple times and so now he's the bringer of light. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's this really great book. It's uh, it's called White Zombie, Anatomy of a Horror Film. It's by Gary D. Rhodes, and uh, it's all about the making of the movie and everything. It's like everything you ever wanted to know about White Zombie. Even down to the matches. <laughs> even down to the ma it, it, it goes too far, like, in analyzing it. And it's great because in the book it even says in the prologue, you can say we've taken this a little too far, but, you know... <laughs> It analyzes like every shot, every detail. Yeah, but but it's, if you're a fan of this movie, I, I couldn't possibly recommend it anymore. It's a you know very detailed book about the movie. I know there's a shot that comes later where they go around the the people's back. Yeah, I'm sure the book probably talks about that. I would imagine it does. Yeah, yeah. and it does give a, a analysis of what that means too. <laughs> We'll talk about that Only yeah, when it comes. See how that guy's in white and the other guy's in black? That probably means something. <laughs> it does. It, it does mention that guy. He's the good guy and he's the bad guy, yeah. I guess. I mean, well, that would be the, yeah. well technically, Van Helsing should be the, the guy. Or I'm just calling him Van Helsing. <laughs> but he should be in white because he's the good guy. Both of these are good guys. You know, in all these movies, why does a butler always have to greet the guests? Like Lurch. Yeah, like right about here. I'll tell Mr. Beaumont you're here. But like, imagine if when you came to my house today, <laughs> like I had like a butler come and say like, you know, um, James will, uh, I, I will let James know that you are here. You know? <laughs> well, I will let Mr. Rolf know. And, and then somebody has to come up to my room. <laughs> Well, in these movies, usually it's people who live in like a gigantic like mansion or something that probably takes like a while to walk from one side to the other. So if you live in that like, a gigantic place and you have you know you're a millionaire or something or whatever, you know then maybe it's a little more appropriate. I don't know. Because look at like the big candelabra or whatever that is in the background. These people yeah. obviously have a lot of money. They're living in luxury here, so they have a butler. Yeah, it's always funny. <laughs> See, they're waiting around. Yeah, they're just waiting. It's like, <laughs> they're, they're like, all right, well, where is this guy? The house must be really big. Right now, the guy's coming from the other side of the house. You're married and have nothing more to do with Mr. Bowman. The young people have arrived, sir. And Dr. Bruder. So he took that long to go upstairs and tell him that he has guests? Show them to their room and tell them I'm out. And he came back. No way. Just the butler came back. Why didn't like the dude Perhaps come back? Secret. You know, like that'd be like if you know I come over to your house and they're like, oh, you know, is James here? And the butler's like, oh, go go see. And then the butler comes back ten minutes later. Yes, he's here. And then I'd be like, I'd be like to the butler, well, okay, can you go get him? <laughs> you know. And, and right now they're discussing whether or not he should go down and, and see him now or, or what. It's like they're making this huge, huge... <laughs> yes, oh, and you notice right now it just yes, cut? Yeah. I'm sure will make a very that good could be a, uh, like, the, like a part of the film that's missing. Because if you notice, um, I mean, this is public domain, so you're, you're bound to find a lot of crappy copies of this. So there's like little pieces missing. And there's a DVD uh, that restores a lot of the missing clips. It's called the, uh, the Roan Group Restoration. So if you find that DVD, it has uh, it has a little more footage than what you're going to see in this one, and uh, that DVD is is uh, the picture quality is restored a little bit. Like I'd say there's a little more grayscale in it. Like it's not as high contrast as what you're looking at now. Um, you still see a lot of scratches and stuff. You know, it still looks like an old film, but the audio isn't really so good. You got to really crank it up. 
There's a newer it's DVD low. that came out uh, in the last year or so. Uh, I think 2008 or 2009, mm. something like that. Um, and I heard that the audio is not too great on that either. Oh, really? So I, I feel like this movie is a movie that really probably could stand a good remastering, you know, mm -hmm. with a really good picture and really good sound. So this movie, even though it's from, what, 1932, Two. It, it, it still has not found a really good release yet, I guess. Yeah. But then again, we like it looking a little crappy. And, yeah. You know, it's... I mean, the way I always remembered it was looking like on a bad VHS copy or something. Yeah. Like supposedly, there, you know that there's a colorized version of this somewhere. Uh, well, there's yeah, they always make like a color. I know there's a colorized King Kong and everything. Yeah, that's true. So now, um, that guy, uh, uh, Beaumont or whatever his name is, there they are. Uh, well, he's going to the Zombie Master Bela Lugosi. Um, and Bela Lugosi runs this sugarcane mill. Yeah, so and, these are his... And the zombies are the ones who... They're like the Oompa Loompas. <laughs> yeah, yeah basically, of. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're running his, uh, you know, his, his sugar mill. And um, basically, uh, he wants to marry that girl who's getting married. So he's going to Lugosi for help to see if he could, like... It's not very clear exactly what he's trying to do, but... That's pretty much... Isn't Lugosi trying to tur turn her into a zombie? Well, he didn't say that yet. Oh, okay. But he basically wants that girl to, like... He, he doesn't want her to get married. He's trying to put a stop to the wedding. Okay. I'll check this here. Whoa. 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 The zombie just gets crushed, crunched up in all the... Uh... That's what happens in the slaughterhouse But when you go to eat at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> and people fall in and they just leave, they just leave human body parts. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be eating that sugar cane. Lugosi would be like the Ronald McDonald. <laughs> he's the he's the Ronald McDonald. He's the McDonald's Corporation of 1932. Yeah. <laughs> he's the equivalent. That that look with like the black hood, you know, you see on right. some of these zombies. You know, like a lot of people take that from like the Seventh Seal and everything. But right. you look at this movie, you know, way before, you know. You see it like in a, like in Young Frankenstein where they have uh, this Igor, and this dude Igor. With, yeah, this dude with the black hat kind of reminds me of the bad guy character in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark a bit. Ah. Uh, That's not Legosi, is it? No. No, okay. But, uh, for a second I thought it was. <laughs> I haven't seen this movie uh, in a year or two, so I'm a little bit unfamiliar. Uh-huh, yeah, definitely. So this is a weird scene coming up. They don't exactly explain what um, Bela Lugosi is trying to do. Nice to see you again, Monsieur Beaumont. Basically, he's going to offer like his his idea of the plan is he's going to turn the girl into a zombie, the white zombie, if you will. What I like about Lugosi is there's always good shots of his hands. Yeah. Like if you notice, like in Dracula, when he when his hand comes out of the coffin, he's got that little hand thing that he does. Uh -huh. In Ed Wood, they talk about, uh, you know, what he does with his hands. And obviously, probably the best example is this movie. There's a lot of shots of his hands when he does, like, the, the fist clamp and all that. Yeah. I always love all that stuff. You can mend for my milk. Then they work faithfully. So I guess I should um, I'll start talking about the origin of zombies. Like, it's based on some reality, kind of like Dracula and Frankenstein. Like, Dracula was partially based on a real person, you know, Vlad Tepes, or whatever. And there's also the Blood Countess, this Hungarian countess who killed young girls and bathed in their blood because she thought it would restore her own youth. Frankenstein was partly inspired by a scientist named Luigi Galvani, who experimented with dead frogs. Luigi! <laughs> He found out that uh, like if he zapped them with electricity, their nerves would twitch. Now, as for White Zombie, there wasn't any literary source. Like, it wasn't specifically based on any book. Um, it was its own original story. But there was a book that came out in 1929 called The Magic Island, which was all about the author's trip to Haiti, where he says he saw real zombies. Um, zombies were a part of a voodoo religion. So... Voodoo's been stereotyped with like evil black magic and stuff, but you know, you, like you've heard of voodoo dolls where you stick the pins in and all that. 
Yeah. But, Speaking uh, of uh, voodoo, Lugosi also did a movie called uh, Voodoo Man. So if you after you watch White Zombie, if you're interested oh, enough, yeah. you should check, uh, search out a copy of Voodoo Man and check Lugosi out in that. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that pretty soon because I haven't seen Voodoo Man yet. <laughs> But yeah, voodoo is a religion, basically. Like, it's not all about, you know, like in the movies, they make it out like uh, evil curses and everything. But zombies w were a part of the, the voodoo culture. So we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. But look at Lugosi's body language. That is way. Like, he's always just so menacing. Yeah, just just like Dracula, that comes from his whole, like, stage, um, how he played Dracula on stage, and how Lugosi was a uh, stage performer. I think all that stuff with his expressions and his hands, I think that all comes from that, to a certain extent. So at this part, he's about to whisper something in his ear, and we're, we don't hear it. Zombie. Is that what he said? Like, it must have been. No. Not that. But whatever it is, it was horrible. Like, did he say, like, he's gonna make he, her eat dog shit or he's something? Like, I'm gonna fuck your mom tonight. <laughs> he could have said anything. No, not that. You yeah. can just make, whenever he whispers, you can just make up whatever you want him to say. It could be like a game. <laughs> so here he gets out a vial with, um, I guess it's like a sedating drug, like that, that, um, powder that's in there. Only a pink boy, a silver wand, in a glass of wine, or perhaps a flower. So what about a glass of wine or a flower? Make it. Put the drug in? A time is very brief. Like, it's not very clear. What must do you share if I'm to help you? It seems clear to me. He just wants to drug her. Yeah. Keep it, monsieur. But it is a little unclear, though. So anyway, about zombies being real. Uh, they're believed to have been uh, brainwashed people, whether by psychological, hypnotic influences or by certain kinds of drugs. Um, they were living people in a death-like trance, and they were made that way to perform slave labor. So they would work in the sugarcane fields, I guess performing the kind of work that farmers would do. Um, so that was the purpose of the zombie. So it wasn't about eating flesh or anything like that. Um, and it's interesting that 1932 was the same year as The Mummy, and that was all about Egyptian culture. But the whole thing with the mummies being resurrected, I'm willing to bet that's all just for the movie. <laughs> so, wait, so, so the reason for zombies was what, instead of not eating flesh? Slave labor. Okay, slave labor. Like when he has them all working in that, uh... So, so did the whole flesh-eating thing, I'm guessing... Maybe that came out of like the comic era with like Tales from the Crypt and EC Comics and all I that. Guess, Is that when all the flesh eating stuff yeah, started? Yeah, and and obviously George Romero was a big fan of the EC Comics. Right. And um, well, that was like in the '60s. Was Night of the Living Dead though? Yeah. So basically, like, I'm just wondering. Basically, I'm just wondering when the flesh eating stuff yeah, started. Yeah. I mean, in the movies, pretty much with Night of the Living Dead. You know, George Romero with the movies, created right, that. Right, yeah. Right. But I'm not sure where exactly it started in comics or anything. One last right. forever. 